Okay, so for today, we're going to for our wise time today, we're going to be looking at healthy eating and healthy living and how this impacts our happiness and our mood as well. So just wanting to pause the video now, I want you to think about these questions. How can you stay healthy and why do you think it um, being healthy is so important? Once you've had a thought, press play. So there are many different ways to stay healthy and some of these include exercising often or lots, eating healthily and having a happy attitude, feeling positive, feeling happy about things. So why do you think healthy is important? Well, it's so important because it makes us feel good. It makes other people feel good. It makes us feel um, lots of energy, wanting to do lots of different things um, and be able to go and have fun as well. So exercise is fun. Doing exercise often will help us all feel great and keep our bodies strong. And the reason for that is when you do exercise, you, re you release um, uh, something called endorphins. So your body releases endorphins and these endorphins make us feel happy. That's why we feel happy when we do exercise and we're having fun um, because of these endorphins. And our hearts need to be kept active and pumping. So if we are doing lots of exercise, okay, our hearts will keep pumping, which means that the blood circulation around your body is really good, it's really effective, and you're um, feeling really fit and healthy. And it also helps to burn fat. So it also gives you that opportunity to keep it nice and fit, nice and healthy, and being able to um, feel lots of lots of energy as well. So here are a few ways um, to stay active. So you could do things like walking, dancing, or playing games, or other things as well. So I just want you to just bullet point, um, pause the video now, and I want you to just bullet point a few other ways that you think um, you can keep, um, keep active and stay active or what you like to do at home. Okay, so pause the video now and then press play once you've got some ideas. So we know that obviously healthy and um, being active and doing lots of exercise is really important for our health, but also eating healthy as well is. So here are some healthy foods and we should aim to eat at least five portions of these a day, um, especially of fruit and vegetables. So obviously we have fruit and vegetables, which can be absolutely anything. Obviously fruits are um, objects or, or products that have got seeds in and obviously um, vegetables are so good for you that help you um, grow and help you um, really give you those nutritions um, and the vitamins and the minerals as well. You've obviously got fish and meat and um, these are something called proteins which help us grow nice and big and strong and help repair any, any injuries. Um, you've got uh, eggs and milk and dairy products, so these help us with our calcium to help our teeth grow and to help our bones grow nice and strong and heal as well. Other food um, is classed as more unhealthy foods, um, which are things like chocolate, chips, cake, sweets. Okay, these are absolutely fine to eat, however, um, it's how much you eat of these. Okay, because eating too much of these can make us overweight and um, put weight on and also not feel good about ourselves because it's not releasing. You, you lose that energy and you're not feeling as active as what you will do if you had more of um, the healthy foods rather than the unhealthy foods. But obviously, unhealthy foods are nice to have as snacks and treats now and again. So the Eat Well Guide. So we're going to have a look at this now. So to be healthy, nutritious food is needed to provide energy for our body because when we eat the food, our tummy turns it all up, digests it all, and the energy of the food goes into our bloodstream and then is transported around our body to give our body um, energy. So a variety of food, different food, is needed in our diet because different foods contain different substances that are needed to keep you healthy. So we're going to have a closer look at these now. Um, because an average meal should be made up of what we call one third carbohydrates, one third fruit and vegetables, and the remaining third being split between dairy products, protein, and a little bit of fat. So we're going to have a look at these closer now. Okay, so although there are lots of different um, foods in the world, they all are looking at keeping that healthy eating with lots of diets having different, um, that looking at those thirds of splitting it into food and different food groups. So. The first one we have is fruit and vegetables. So obviously here we've got some examples of bananas, pears, broccoli, peas, cabbage, leek, onion, um, 
tomatoes, strawberries. So obviously these are all what we call fruit and vegetables. And on your plate, you should have a third. Now, obviously we've been doing fractions, so we know that means three parts. You then also have something called carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates give us energy over a long period of time. So these are things such as bread, rice, potatoes, pasta, starch, another starchy food, um, couscous, it could be cereal or rice, to give us that long-lasting en energy so that we can use the energy in our bodies over a long period of time. And obviously, because we need that energy over a long period of time, that is why we also need about a third of these for our diet as well. So the final third is split between dairy products. So these are things like milk, cheese, yogurts, ice creams. And obviously the dairy products help us um, with our calcium, giving us calcium to help our teeth um, get nice and strong and our bones nice and strong and help our body grow as well. This then is also split into foods um, in higher sugar, so it could be some fats in there, um, some it could be oils and sauces or um, other sorts of food um, that we might want to have some because fats, as much as if you ate too many of them, it would be bad, however fats do give us some energy release as well. And this also includes oils and sugars as well which can fit into that category because obviously that's the fats that are going in. And then finally, the last part of the, this third is made out of something called protein. OK, and proteins include things like meat, fish, eggs, beans um, non non dairy products. Um, so here are just a few examples that you could have. And what proteins are really great for is they help us grow big and strong. They help repair muscles or injuries that you might have. And they're really good for really good for you. So obviously your final third has got a mixture of those things in as well. OK, so diets around the world. Now, these can be all different. So people eat different food around the world, but some things might be familiar to you. Some things you might never have seen before. So we're going to look at a few um, examples. You might have already had this or tried it, or you might not have had it before, but you might recognise some of the products within it. So I would like you to see, can you name the foods in this photo and name their food group? So see, can you see if there's some carbohydrates and proteins and dairy products? What, is the, what are the foods in this photo? And can you guess where have they come from? Which country are they from? So just pause the video now. I want you to have a quick look, a quick think, and then play to see what, um, what the answer is. So... This is called paella, or paella, if you are in Spain. Okay, it's traditionally a Spanish dish, um, also from Valencia, um, particularly in the region. Um, and what this is, it's a rice dish. So again, it's using that rice, using that carbohydrates. But this time it's got all sorts of different vegetables in it. It's got lots of fish um, and different seafood in it as well. You can also get ones with chicken and chorizo in there as well um, to get that protein in there. OK, this time, pause the video now. What, where do you think this food is from? What do you think it's called? What is in this food product? Pause the video now and then press play. OK, let's have a look. So this one is called bento. And this is a Japanese uh, food product. And this contains things like rice. It's got fish and meat. Um, it might be battered with pickled or cooked vegetables. And it's all served in a box. It comes together. So again, <clears throat> It's still using the food groups of the chicken and fish for the protein. It's got the meat, um, sorry, the vegetables and the fruit. And it's obviously got some carbohydrates as well in there as well with the rice. OK, what do you think about this one then? Pause the video and then let's have a look. OK, this is called a biryani. It's traditionally an Indian um an Indian dish so you might have had this before you might have seen um, this before now again we can see that there's rice lots of rice there for our carbohydrates we've got some meat for or some chicken or some beef or lamb and um, for our protein and we've got other things like yogurt and fruit and vegetables within that as well to give us those five a day and to give us that um, healthy healthy diet OK, so looking at these two, two dishes here that we've just spoken about, we've got obviously paella and we've got the biryani. What do you notice that is similar and what do you notice that is different between these? So I want you to pause the video now. You can write some bullet points down of similarities and differences or you can just have a think and then press play once you have done that and we'll see how you've got on. 
So the similarities are that obviously they've both got a lot of rice in their dishes, so needing that for the carbohydrates for that slow release of energy. They've both got protein in their dishes. They've both got either meat or fish inside of their dish as well. They've both got things like vegetables or chilies and things like that in their dishes. Um, and they obviously they're very, very similar. The difference, as you might have said, is that um, paella is more, is more traditionally more for the um, fish and the seafood, whereas biryani is more for the meat products. Um, and obviously there's more of a sauce with the biryani, which will be made up more of dairy products um, to make the sauce. And whereas obviously for the paella, it's not as creamy and not as, so not as much sauce. OK, so the, the food we eat may differ. However, we need we all need to eat food. So, for example, we need to eat it so that we can stay healthy, so that it gives us energy so we can go and play and so it helps us grow. So that obviously when you're a little baby growing up, you need to make sure you're having lots of different food to help with your growth. And so for this reason, the food groups are the same across the world um, as everybody needs these um, to help us. These three key things, healthiness, energy and to grow. So we've obviously had a look at this previously, so we know that in each different, on a plate that you should have a third being fruit and vegetables, a third being carbohydrates, and the other third of your plate should either be dairy, fats, or protein. Okay, so what I would like you to do for your test today is that I would like you to draw a picture of a meal that includes these healthy food choices. So it could be that you think of a Sunday dinner, that obviously there you've got lots of fruit and vegetables, you've got some meat there, you've got some gravy. And then you can draw this as a big plate. Okay, it could be that you do a nice big picture on an A4 piece of paper. And then I want you to describe what each of these food groups are. So on the side of it, can you tell me if they're carbohydrates, if they're proteins, fats, dairy products, or fruits and vegetables? Okay, and if you have done that, you can then explain why you need to make sure that you are eating these. Um, or you can also do a pudding as well to see what other what other um, fruit and not fruit and vegetable. It could have fruit and vegetables from um, fruit that you're going to put into it, or what dairy products you might have in a pudding as well. And then once you've done that, if you can put your work on seesaw, and then I can obviously have a look at it and give you some feedback.